Um, can you please start by telling us your name and where you're from? My name is Don Cooney, Dog Cooney, and I'm from Manderson, South Dakota, Whitehorse Creek. What brought you to Stanley? Uh, there was uh, some people from down home that got arrested in the beginning, and so that is when the tribe asked us if anybody wanted to go, so that was it. Jumped in a caravan and we was here. What did you do when you were at Standing Rock? I was head of chief of security. What did that entail being chief of security? What's that? What did that entail? That 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 was a whole lot. I was counselor, marriage counselor, everything that uh, you know beyond security, but uh, it was every I had to deal with everything, you know. Had to deal with drugs, people trying to bring drugs in. But I put a I put a halt to that. Some did get in, but you know, the majority of it, it was good. But I told them in the first first place, before you come across that river, leave all your bad baggage over there, whatever it may be. If you come with your woman, you guys have problems, put them problems over there. Because it's, it's like you coming into a new world, so yeah, you have to re you like it was like to me, you were reborn. So all that bad shit that you brought with you, you know, please leave it on the other side of the river because it's a sacred camp, which was very beautiful, a lot of power. And uh, a lot of those that couldn't see that, then I had to be the one to, well, you see that road over there? You can get back on and go home and you, and uh, think about it, what, what's really going on here? What are, what, what are you really here for? This ain't no party. A lot of people thought like, this is a Woodstock 3. This is no Woodstock 3. <laughs> The best one of my best uh, visit memories was the Longhouse and uh, when they turned these uh, golden eagle, a bald eagle loose. They had a big ceremony there. But these two eagles, they got they got wounded. So they got nursed them back to health and they brought them over there and they turned them loose. And they went way up and they come back around and flew back towards the river because that's their territory anyway, you know, the rivers. And that was very, very interesting there. And then on the other side, of the other hand, some guy stole a car and come flying through camp. Could have killed somebody, could have killed some kids, could have been anybody. But luckily he hit a post or something. But I think Dapo set, it, set him up because you don't just go to a car car lot and get a brand new Camaro, fire red Camaro, you know. Because I've, I've went to a few of them and they'll go with you, you know. So I think they set him up. That was, that was one bad incident there. No, another one was a bus coming from, uh, uh, what's the name? Spirit, uh, the other camp over there? Oh, wow. Sacred Stone. Yeah. So anyway, they was having a concert over at the, up, up at the north up there, the, the first first gate there. So I just went up there, my four-wheeler, check it out, everything was cool. And they was all having a good time. Native rapping. So I, that was good. But anyway, on my way back, I come into where the security's at, and this big old bus. And they went straight on through, so I told that security, I said, hey, why don't you let that bus go through? You don't know what's on there, you know? So anyway, I pulled him over, and every man, his eyes were lit. And I know, he was a meth head. So anyway, I told him, could you pull this bus over down, down below down there? So I pulled, I pulled up behind him, I looked in the mirror like that at him. You know? These little guys all nervous and everything. I said, I was, I was kind of scared to go, I don't tell him going to do anything. So anyway, I got my, walked up to him, I looked at him, here he was just, he was just sweating away. And I knew he was, he was a oh, meth, there was a whole meth family, kids and all. But anyway, behind them, remember how the buses, the bus drivers see this? All of a sudden, this little old lady, she said, that's my son. And mom, she's a, she's a grandma meth head. So I said, no, you, you guys got to get out of here. They're not staying there. Not that one, you know, that one there. You said that you have a lot of issues with people trying to take drugs in, and I, we've been doing some interviews, and we've heard that people who have worked in Dakota or Mm -hmm. A lot of the people, a lot of the people I had the issues with, and I'm so sorry to say this, was the Standing Rock people. 
themselves. Because they would say, well, this is my land, you know. We're a hung papa, you know, go back to your old land. Hey, that, that ain't what this is all about, you know. We come here to stand in unity as the people of the nation of the world. Not just the United States of America, but of all countries, you know. It was an awakening for the world, not just for, not just for America. So. And majority of them, a lot of them were, I would say they were white, white folks that were trying to bring in, and natives, you know. But, you know, we got, well, they didn't last very long, you know. Was Sandy Rock your first experience with activism? Or? My first experience was uh, Alcatraz, wow. 1969. Well, that, took, that came under the treaty. Madonna, my sister, she was there. That's where I met her at. But that was just to show the United States that, man, you made a treaty with us a long time ago. Not only did you break the treaties in central, you know, the central United States, you broke them on the west coast, east coast, north and south, Canadian to Mexico, you know. And then my next one was the fishing rights in uh, Washington State, Olympia. And then the next one, in between, to Wounded Knee, then in between, you know, just regular thing goes on, you know, racism, all that especially the women. I, I got a strong heart for women because of the way they get treated, you know. And, you know I grew up in you know, you there's a woman's up here and a man's down here, you know. But see, they, they reversed it. It's, it's not like that because the women have the power. If you listen to them, you know, and I've listened to them. I used to listen to them quite a bit. And then I ended up in uh, all of them all, Standing Rock. <laughs> Which did I say? Of all the things I've been on, that was one of the greatest experiences and the greatest learning um, teachings in my life. Just like, you know, you, me born. You know, you just, like they say, well, you know, don't matter how old you get, if you ain't, if you don't you get, you always learn something. So if you ain't learning, then something's wrong, you're missing. You know, you're missing a page or something. Even right now, this is learning for me right now. That ain't my first camera either. <laughs> Standing Rock, okay, the majority of the other ones I've been on, I always packed the peace. I had no choice. They go to shoot me, I'm going to shoot you back. You're going to shoot my sister, you're going to shoot one of the owls, you're going to shoot one of, you know, you're one of the kids, I'm going to shoot back at you. But where this here was uh, prayer, power, powerful prayer. But yet, I, uh, I would have rather been armed and dangerous and show them what it's like, you know. Because like that to me, we just took a beating. You know? I mean, I, I'm, that's what they asked me, put myself on the front lines. For the front front lines, I've been on the front lines all my life. I was born into it. And I'm not gonna let you do that to me. But the rest of the people, they chose that, you know? And I, I, didn't, I didn't really like that. You know, because well, what did it prove? To me, it didn't, it did prove maybe he wasn't scared, but you took a, they took a beating, you know? And I, that don't make, make no sense to me. So if, uh, if uh, if it would have been armed and dangerous, none of that would have happened. Or maybe it would have kind of went to a little bit, like wounded knee, you know. It was armed and dangerous. A couple of my bros got shot, you know. There's some women that got raped, you know, on the other side. That's, you know, and that not a solid, ain't been solved, unsolved murders of wounded knee in 1973. So, you know. No, I was like, like this, you know, to me, as a native person, it's already in your blood. It's, it's handed down, you know, it's, it's, it's like it's in your genes, you know. And being born there, my first resistance as a kid was going to school called Holy Rosary Mission, which was very bad. Where they tried, well, we couldn't, we couldn't speak our language, we couldn't do our artwork, we couldn't draw. You know, it was bad. It made me eat soap, beat me with the rubber strap, you know. So that's, that was my first, that's when I, I knew I, I had to resist because I used to listen to my, my, my grandpa and they, they, didn't, they didn't like that, but there's two, uh, traditional and then you had the Christianity, you know. So which one? And then a lot of them, you know, they were colonized into it, brainwashing into it, you know. So that's, that's where it all began. You said you had 11 kids? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. They have, they have the, uh, a lot of my, uh, well, a few of my sons, they got into that, remember, rap. 
start wearing their pants down there, you know. <laughs> but uh, none of them go for that, you know. That's not our culture. <clears throat> but to most of them that go to the cities, they bring it back from the cities. We got our own powwow, you know, and our own, like, like, like the native rap, there's some good songs. But like the black rap, man, it cuss whore, this, that, bitch. That. No, that's, just, that's not even cool. That just shows they got, they got no identity, you know. Our self-respect, our respect for their women, our the elders, you know. Because I've seen it, you know. It's, it's nothing. But to me, that's, that's, that's very sad for them to be that type of a people where they came from. Because their people, before they came over on the boat, when they brought them over as slaves, they weren't like that. But they got colonized into be, uh, being Americans, you know. Then it progressed from there to there to where it is today, you know. It's, Oh, they, my sons, they come and visit my daughters, my nieces, yeah, I've got a few, yeah. How young were your nieces who came? 18, uh, you know, 21, 22, 10, 9, all the way from up here up to up here. What was the experience like with the younger ones? And there were the younger ones, there was some, I'd say, from around 18 to 21 that had a drinking problem and they came over there. They were, they were the tough ones, mouthy. You know, no respect. So I had to teach him respect and respect. I said, you know what? There's that road right there. You, you, you go and you can leave. You know, yeah, I, I will ask you to leave. I'm not kicking you out. I'm going to ask you to leave in a good way. As an, as an elder. But then, um, then there were those that would just wanted to learn. Like they, they, they felt the spirit. You know, they can. Them, them ones came for a reason, they came to listen. And that's the only way in life. If you listen in life, no matter how old you get, you'll learn something. But those that already think they know it all, have been around the block, they don't remember, they don't ever break around the first block. They'll be stumbled though. End up being a stumbler, stumbling the rest of their lives, you know. It's like when you start something, you finish it. So if you're a type of person, you start something, I don't want to do that. And then you're gonna continue with life. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna do this and ah, oh, then this. It don't work that way. You start it, you finish it. That's like this resistance. Yeah, it'll never end. I'll take it to my grave because that's that's what I do. You know, I fight for my people of all cultures, of all races. You know, it's just skin. It's skin, no matter. It's in your heart. It's in your chante. You know. So that's where that lies with me. Do you hope that your kids will sort of continue? Oh yes, they will. Yeah, they will. Because this here, right here, what you're doing right now, to listen to me talk, <laughs> listen to Grandpa talk, you listen good now. How would you continue to instill that activism and that passion to keep resisting? Okay, well, I've ever usually rapid. There's a lot of, uh, we have a, which is very racist, and they say they ain't. Uh, the mod house, tell the truth. Because uh, they're, uh, there's an incident of a lady that went up there for surgery and they, she died. And a while back, a few years ago, some guy from, from here, a matter of fact, um, uh, Vernon uh, Travisy, went in for surgery, blind guy, and while he was knocked out, they took with uh, those knives, surgical knife and cut into him, K, K, K. So anyway, we come up here and we had uh, all the court and that there. And him, his wife, he's married to some white woman from California. She talked him out of it to settle out of court, which I didn't completely just drop the charges. So that was sad. After all the work, the work we did, you know. <clears throat> As for the dad like that, you know, where over killings on the res, you know, you know where, where women getting beat up, their men beating them up, over meth and alcohol, you know. That's, that's what I do, I stand up against that, especially for the women. You know, you, you don't beat on no woman, you know. You beat on a woman, I'm gonna get together and we're gonna see that you don't beat on a woman again, you know. Something to get them, you know. Just like that, everyday things, you know. Just everyday life that, that's on the negative side and that police, police brutality, you know, racism, that you did, that's a, I mean, that's, that's an everyday thing, so, you know, and, and that's um, everyday, that's what I, that's what I do. Though. To prevent it, you know. Uh, going back to Standing Rock, um, what were the dates that you were there? Huh? Well, from what time to what time were you there? I was from there, I think, the third week in July until the about the uh, second week in January. 
because I almost froze. I'm, I still throwing out. <laughs> so you were in the front line. I was on mostly Robin Patrol because I was head of security. But I used to go up to the uh, front lines all the time. I had to go because I had to haul people out, you know. that I really experienced is when they sent the, the, the dog on us, the dogs. We pushed them way back there. Then, but by that time, man, they didn't mace. I don't know how many they made, but I put them on that four-wheeler, bring them back, bring water in. And I, cause there's a bridge, I could just see them right there, and they all dapple security. Not, 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 not the sheriffs, not the cops. Dapples own people, redneck racist people. And this woman, she, she, she's a dapple security. I said, and I pulled in, I said, you can't be doing that. I said, hey, you guys got to back down now, man. You're instigating this. She said, if you don't get the fuck out of here, she said, I'll sink this fucking dog on you. And she went like that. And I said, good thing something, they would probably jump and bit me here. I bit my face. And by the time I looked this way, that's from the, one of my buddies, he was here. They bit, bit him, bit him on the face. And, uh, like he said, there's a, there was a fire down by the bridge. There was no fire down there. But what they did, like Hitler did to the Germans, is what they tried to do us, and it was cold. So what they do, they sprayed, it, sprayed them with the cannons. And I brought some of them out of there. Soaking wet, remind you. And that's what they did. They said there was, there was no fire. Because there, there's some pictures you can see directly from here to that tire, right there, a little further. That's how powerful those are. And they're not spraying, they're just spraying it right into the people, you know. But that's your cover, that's what the sheriff, the sheriff lies. Yeah. What was it like to be experiencing that and know what was happening, the severity of it, and then seeing the media not quite do any justice to the scenario and at times even? That's when I, I really honestly, uh, I always figured there's going to be uh, one of their, well, one of, the, one of them did. Pulled a gun, pulled a rifle and a pistol, but they knocked him out of it. But if he would have come flying through the crowd there by the bridge, I imagine how many people, or or unless he, unless he turned, he he, he turned uh, turned loose with that uh, semi-automatic uh, AR-15. How many people would he shot? You know? and that was their intentions. I mean, they're born, they're born into. It. You have to realize they come, they come from a, they come, they come from Custer's. Those people up there come from that's Custer's generation. So a generation, a generation, of, you know, let, let's terminate the Indian. That's that, that's them. And that's exactly what they were doing, you know. Because they're the only now that they ain't got nothing to the hell they don't. It's just written, it's written, right, written all over the, all over the pages, you know. Yeah, you know. So. You said that you had learned from some of the greatest in terms of activism. Do you feel that you have learned from Well, who's a big mentor? One of my brothers named Webster, Webster Poor Bear, Wallace Blackhawk, Leonard Crow Dog. There's quite a few. Angel Martinez. Some people brought bros from Alcatraz from all over, you know, that I grew up with, you know. What were they like? What was it like having them as mentors? I listened. I ran I listened. You could tell. Learned well. But uh, no. then I called all the woman cheese grandma. And I, hey, and this guy here right here. <laughs> hey, he's one of my, he's one of my uh, good cold house cheese. Yeah. He's a warrior. What went on? Of all my experiences, it, it's always been the, the, from the women, a lot of my women, that you know, you're sitting and you're talking, you, know, you listen to them. And that is what gives me, has given me the, the strength to uh, stand strong and you know, don't disrupt them when they're saying something. Because remember, they're the, they're, they're, you a lot of people get you where, where we came from. We come from the first water, who carries that water? The women. You're in that water, see? That's the first sacredness. That's, you know, that's, that's life. But on the other hand, up there, they don't, on the other side, a lot of other cultures, they don't understand that, you know. It's like it's just boring, you know. Hey, that, that, man, that's, that's the most powerful thing in the world for a woman, you know. So you cheat, you cheat, you cheat her. She's your, she is the totem pole, you know. So 
don't let men teach you bad. Or get a hold of me, and they'll never teach you bad again. You know? You have to. Mm -hmm. Is that what? Have you ever, have you participated in any other social justice movements other than Standing Rock? She's all over. There's, there's, all, there's always something going somewhere, someplace. Yeah. And like, okay, well, I lived in Rapid City. Yeah. Okay, there's always issues with them, Native women, yeah. of being racist to our, being racist and being like, disrespecting our women. It's a, to them, like, it's a cow, you can go, it's okay, you can do that to women. No, you can't. You know, I'm tired of it. I've always been tired of it. I watch my uncles she get tired of it, you know. So that's how I come into that there, you know, for them being, you know, her women are beautiful, you know. But you look at beauty, beauty comes within. And you think you can, you know, you're going to do that to them? That, no, not while I'm around. Or those of us that's left that still believe that, believe believe in that way, you know. Because it's part of our culture, you know. To them, I just, you know, what if we, you know, well, what if we went around and did that? They, they, they wouldn't like that, you know. But we're not like that, you know. I would, I would never put myself in that category or you know, in comparison, you know, to that. Even, even white women, I'm not prejudiced, you know. I, I'm still, I stick up for white women too. Black women, they don't matter. A woman's a woman. Like I said, color don't matter. We all have the same blood, and we have one creator that created all of us. He didn't say this one, this one, this one, all of you together within that circle, and that circle that like there, right there, and the circle of the universe, and the circle of the fire. And that's the way it is. Yeah. Um, and people have talked about the shift in the, in the energy and the Yeah, towards the end. Well, it's when uh, it got cold and let's have 66. And that, you know, they, well, they had asked us in a good way because they didn't want us to get pneumonia and all that. And, you know, it wasn't, we didn't have very, you know, for the shelter from the storm, we say, the blizzards. So then I, up there around that time, then there. Security, they got to where uh, the South, the South, South appointees, the younger ones, they wanted to do, they wanted to get radical, and a lot of that, that started happening. So, and then they took down the, the long, the long, the long tent where that was a spiritual tent. But uh, then after that, after that, all it kind of just, I mean, the spirit was there, but but the, the unity it was coming. Who's the, this? This camp, this camp, this camp, and you can see see the. Uh, Everything's splitting up, and that's when the spirit, you know, it wasn't as spiritual as it was in the beginning. In the beginning, it was so powerful, and so beautiful, but then, towards the end, there it kind of it got ugly, I mean, because they lost their spirit, you know. And the ones that lost their spirit is probably the ones, the ones that did. If you come there for a learning, you come there uh, was a blessing. And those that did, you know wanted, wanted to instigate and uh, cause trouble, and that, that's where it all holds at. Then this guy over here too. <laughs> there you go on the piano. Documentary. Go, go sign that. Tell the story, true story. Sign that deal over there. Tell the true story. Sign that deal and a couple charges put on me. But anyway, yeah, it, it got it got bad in the end there. No respect. I began to see you know, disrespecting the elders. Don't want to listen. Then they had their, their own little groups. But you know, when you meet, you bring that circle together. You know, but you know, after that, it was. So I headed out. My tent froze up. I get I got sick, and since I might as well just go, cause it's over. You know.
It's hard, you know. I've been shot, I've been stabbed, I've been all kinds of things back in the day. But I've seen that and I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to give you that satisfaction, you know. You done did it to me more than once, you know. And I learned very well from that. I'm, but to them, and they, they wouldn't, people wouldn't listen. They go up to cuss around, everything, cuss them up. And that's, see, they're trained. They are trained to exactly do that. They want you to do that. That gives them a reason. But I also seen one time, I told them, they just every now, don't say nothing, just be quiet, just pray. Just be quiet, that's all you gotta do. And watch them, get, watch them lose it. And they did, and they didn't know what to do because they wouldn't get cussed at, wouldn't get rocks thrown at them. And that's what they wanted. But they didn't get that because that, that's what they wanted. They didn't know what the hell to do. So it was very, very peaceful there for maybe about, oh, eight, that was almost, almost a day, seven hours. Then after that, then there comes these other little instigators and it happened every damn time. I seen them come to the front gate, I mean, down on the bridge here. You know, and go right up to them, they're right here, and we're right here, and go up to them and start mouthing, getting in their face and everything. And then they would turn around and take off in the back. Well, the rest of them stood there and got their asses kicked. Same instigators. I know every one of them. But I watched them and read some, read some out of them. Oh, we don't do that. I said, well, why did you, why'd you go up there and mouth off? Then get those other, get your, get your colas. Beat up, get your colas, face bombed and tear gas. Then you didn't, why didn't you stay there and take, take it with them? You know, you're just an instigator. And then after that, they don't get rid of me. They won't get rid of you. You know, pretty soon they self pointed themselves as security. It's not my security, because I come under the grassroots American Indian movement. I'm the vice president. That's not going to happen. So. You're the vice president? Mm hmm. The grassroots American Indian movement. Just like what I'm doing right now, telling them just what I do with resistance, take care of the people, you know, help people out. How long have you been the vice president? Let me see. I've been going on about three years now. But I've been, uh, I've been, I've been in the American Indian Movement ever since 1973. But before that, before the American Indian Movement come along, remember there's uh, Black Panthers, the Chicano, the Chicano Movement. I go back to then, but then back where us natives back then, it was Red Power, yeah, Alcatraz. So I've been there, it's been a long time, been a long ride. Is the vice president position, is that, um, you elected into that position? They appointed me, yeah. Wow, so you must have a pretty, you must be pretty prominent leader in the room. Yeah, well, you go back, been, in, say, been into how many years now? <laughs> no, no, no better choice, you know, you want to base, there could be someone been there two years, three years, but if you've been doing this, this is part of been they do it part of your part of your life, you know. You do it. It was it was hard though. I would like to say to you, those of you that would like to get involved and stand up for your people, you're going to be very strong. But those of you, you choose the other side, you choose the other side, you're going to have a tough ride. And it's good, it's only, you know, I always say for us as native, the war is never over because they still want our land, what's left. So we got to fight for it, you know. So those of you, stand strong and listen to your elders. Listen to them. Don't think you know it all because you don't. I've been around 61 years and I don't know it all. I'm still at 66. I still don't know it all. I probably never will know it all because I learn something new every day. It's like you two ladies right here. That's something new every day. You know? I'll stick up for your rights. You know? Yeah, behave. <laughs> behave, watch out. Just watch where you go and watch the company you keep. Because I've been out there, you know. I was on the other side of that road one time. Bye. I put that, I put that all aside. I had a choice. And I seen the choices of uh, people dying from drugs, people dying from alcohol, dying from everything, you know. So what choice are you going to make? And, you know, it's still on top of the chart for the people. You know, the alcohol, the bad. 
It's like White Clay, we're still fighting that. They're trying to, we stopped that. They, ah, uh, temporary court shut it down now, but they just had a meeting that didn't get to make it in Lincoln, Nebraska. And they want to bring it back. And that's good, right next to the res, you know. That's still good. So. But they don't, they don't care about our people. First of all, we as native people of all cultures, uh, alcohol has never been uh, has never been a part of our lives. So uh, it affects us a lot of if you notice, it'll affect you in a different way because that's because people that the people that make it, they they you know they, they're used to it you know. This person, our body is not made for it. You know? They accept it. So we got to all get a different spirit inside us and say, you know, now you, know, you can't do this. That's why you end up getting cirrhosis and all kind of bad things. You know? Leave the booze alone, leave the drugs alone, and listen to your elders. And stay in school because school is so beautiful. Go out in the world, meet people. That's what I did. Only I only went to the only went to the ninth grade, but I went to I went to UCLA. I went to Berkeley. Why? Why? Like at UCLA. And they, well, I did sign up. I used to. I had friends there. They had a Native American studies, so I went then my friends. I just go sit in the classroom. Yeah. And I graduated before both of them. No, it was all good. It was good. Yeah. Going back to your, you've been an for a very long time. What were some of the biggest accomplishments or the biggest, like, most progress you saw, and what were some setbacks that you witnessed? <clears throat> the biggest accomplishment is uh, we got education back, yeah. we got our ceremonies back, we got our powwows back, we got our hair, we got we got all that back. Where before, you know, you see that, you would never see that, like that, standing rock, you never see this. So we've, we've come a long ways, you know, because before, in school, you couldn't do that, you know. They take it away from you. Use a ruler on my hands, bust my hands up. I mean, you're talking a little kid, you know. Made me eat soap, use a razor strap on us, you know. Couldn't go out of boundary, went out of boundary, get, get a whipping. Then the, there's kids that got molested, there's girls that got raped. I know, not, they, they, never, they, never, they were never the, the priests, and they, they were, they have, they have, this day had never been brought, brought to justice for the charges, for the crimes they committed upon my people and all my sisters, and you know. But I'm sure if they say the way it is, if there's a hell, because you know, Lakota, we ain't got that. We ain't got that. But it, to me, and most of them, they're going to hell and they're going to burn. That's what they say. That's where they're headed. So they will pay the price. If that's their belief. I would like to see the people of all reservations, people of all nationalities, to sit down and think and talk about a unity. Unity, not just of Standing Rock, not just of the United States of America, not just of Pine Ridge, not just of Navajo. The unity of the world, that's what it has to be. There has to be that one greatest prayer, and that greatest prayer comes from, it comes from the universe. So all those prayers, all that power, that's where it has to go, you know. The more prayers, the more powerful. So if you do that, we all do that. That's that's what it's got to be. So I know I know people, you know, even my own. They, they, they didn't know how to pray because that was taken away from them. And then it, then you don't know how to pray, you know. They, you know, you got to. Yeah, I, I was like that. I, I didn't know how the deal was until I found myself, found my spirit. Then I could learn how to pray again. But that, them, they used to force it upon us, you know. And make you go to church, make you kneel down, 
No wonder I got bad knees. <laughs> they did. This make us deal with. Put a broom. Figure I'm, I'm a, you figure I'm in a fifth, I'm fifth grader, and on a hardwood floor, make you kneel there, put a broom on your arm right here like that, until you fell, and then go to, then they make you go to bed. But they make damn sure that, you know, that, that it's torture. And that these are these are these are people that believe in believe in the Bible. You know, they believe in God, they believe in Jesus. See? That's you spoke about how going to standing rock was like being reborn. Do you think that it helps some people find a prayer again? Oh yeah, actually, so, you know, that's one of the most beautiful things. Because I've seen women, well, a lot of women that were that were drunks and thank me for coming there and being security and, and sitting there. Because I used to visit the, that's, the women come see me and visit me. Usually women go visit women, visit to women. The others come, I'll, I'll visit with them. You know, I, I share their pain, you know. And there's a lot of them, they quit. I'm not so proud of them. And until this day, I've been now, I've been um, those that, you know, when they're there, you know, some has been a year now, sober. Wow. Family, they're doing good. And then on the other hand, those that didn't really pay attention there. They're, they're where they was before they came across the river, you know. That's, you know. I look at the ones, well, I'm praying for, I'll pray for the ones that didn't. And say, say prayers for the ones that did so that they, 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 they stay strong. But it's hard to, uh, it's hard to live on the reservation. Because there's no jobs, you know. And I could kind of see why, you know, because he gets so depressed, and, you know, just, it's, it's bad, man. He gets, you could drive through, you drive through, here, through here, you can see it. You can see the people that you go over there by the mini mart over there. I guess that, that's their beer joint over there. But you can see the ones that hang out there, how sad they are, and, you know. But the people got family, but they, they would sure, I'm sure, would like to have a, a nice house, a nice job. You know, be able to, you know, like everybody else, you know, but it, it don't work that way. You know, everything's limited. And the ones that do get in there, they keep them jobs. You know, they I always say, why don't you just get enough to you got a car, you got a house? No, let's, not a, let's give this other person that chance. So it goes around instead of you keep it for 10 years, you keep it for five years. You know, share it, share it. You know, that's what it is. But we don't got that. Or even our own people, our own people have turned in, are greedy, getting greedy, are greedy, getting selfish. They forgot that heart for their people, you know? Yeah. My mom used to say, if you forgot what she's going to say, yeah. it must have been a lie or you're supposed to be living. Do your kids and grandkids live on the reservation with you or do they live in the cities? Because I know you wrote this. Oh, yeah. Got one lives in Alaska. I got one that just moved to right. He was living down in Pine Ridge. I got two down there now. Yeah, most of them live on the res. What the wind blow it over? Yeah, everything, yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Do you have hopes for your grandkids who are living on the reservation? Like, what do you hope the future holds for them? Is that uh, they stay in school and be good? But be good, just be good at what you be good at. Because I got my, a couple of my uh, my uh, granddaughters, and they're just doing great. One to one, she's all around athlete. She gets involved in everything. I'm so proud of them. I got one that just, he got to go to Australia, to uh, basketball down under, and Hawaii. We had to, we had to, I had to, I had to make, I had to, have to have a hustle for it, $6,000, you know. But see, there's other parents here. They got to, I don't know, I guess, I've never been a quitter. And it's probably, this is a thing, probably not to do it, because I never did a, get in my, my time, my, my, they like to, we never did have that chance. And now that we got it, as a parent, I could give that to them, you know. And I just, he's, he's, going, he's, going, he's going to school, rapid. Yeah, so he's doing good. The other one, they're both graduated, my daughter. I had one daughter that she, she's going to treatment, and I'm glad she is. But if she wasn't going to go, me and, my, me, and your, me and your sister sent in the off, and I'll sign the papers. You wouldn't do that, Dad, would you? And I said, the hell I won't. You're going to be mad at me, but you'll get over it. Because you know where I'm going to grow. I said, I love you, and I don't want to bury you. 
That's exactly. So she talked about that pretty damn hard, man. So not only me, but the rest of your family, they all love you, but you're killing yourself, you know? You think you're just hurting yourself, you're not hurting just yourself, you're hurting the whole family, you know? The people that love you, you know? So that's good, that's that. Many Wachonians, stay strong wherever you may be, in all four directions.